All right, Shockmaster fans, it's Kevin Costner's acting debut. Film he tried to buy out and prevent from being seen. Sizzle Beach, USA, otherwise known as Malibu Hot Summer. Let's check it out. Okay, our movie follows the trail of uh, Cheryl, we'll Dit, and Janice. I can't believe that bus driver leaving without checking to see that everyone was on the bus. They're on their way to California. Actually, two of them meet the third in the bathroom, and they have a plan. Anyway, I inherited this house right on the beach in Malibu with my cousin Steve. And since I've always wanted to be an actress, this is my chance to finally come to California. Dit is the one who uh, hey, inherited the house. ID. And here's Steve. He's already at the house with a lady. Yeah. Oh. Cheryl is the blonde. You're, you're early. And Janice, the other yeah, brunette, well, wants to be a singer. These are my two new friends. Cheryl Riley and Janice Johnson. Well, since they interrupted his lady, the lady decides to I bug out. So they all get acquainted. They all spend the night. Cheryl is uh, on an exercise bike topless, which I can't show you. You really ought to actually take a look at it. Cheryl meets a guy named Brent while on the beach. He was pretending to hurt his ankle so she would help him, and she did. Oldest trick in the book. Oh, that feels better. Dit meets a farmhand. That is Hi. a young Kevin Costner. I'd like to ride a horse. Well, we're closed on Monday. You're Turns kidding. out he owns this place. I just came all the way out here As well as a bunch of other ranches in other states. Your advertisement in the yellow pages doesn't say anything about you being closed on Mondays. You came all the way from Malibu. And this is his midget I friend, mean, Peter. I'm tall, really. I'm over 5'1". Baby, to me, that's tall. Dick, you ought to be bored with him in about 20 minutes. You'll find me in the barn. <laughs> Janice you know, has an audition. Every year I sponsor a contest for all the new singers. And uh, first prize is one week free use of my studio and 10,000 bucks. All you need is a $50 entrance fee. Yeah, well that sounds great, but there's probably a lot of competition. Janice and Cousin Steve get acquainted. That's obviously Dit's Cousin Steve, not Janice's. Cheryl interviews for a teaching job. And none of them were married, Miss Riley. Could it be that all of that exercising you gym teachers do overstimulates your libido? She's going to get the job. Lord. Meanwhile, Dit attends an acting class. Cheryl! We can't get out! The knock fell out the door! What reality? What a personal moment, dear. The teacher then asked her to be a banana. So naturally she peels herself. Miss McCoy, what are you doing? Stimulating my imagination. I was peeling my banana. We do not take our clothes off in class, Miss McCoy. I'm going to give you an exercise you can work on at home. I want you to be a tree in a windstorm. Bring it in next time. You're a really good rider. Hey, look, how about if I take you home? Then you won't have to take a cab. No, thank you. Why not? Because you haven't been honest with me. She was irritated that he didn't admit that he owned that place as well as the other places. Nonetheless, she forgives him and they make love. Why you destroy what you build? We got a little love montage for Cheryl and Brent. I think that's Janice singing, actually. Brent tries to escalate things real quickly. You like it? It's beautiful. But she's going to turn him down. I can't accept it. Even you 
Santa Claus, Miss McCoy. Um, yes. This is a strange interview she has to become an actress. Be prepared and watch the sky at all times. They're going to sign her. This is a talent agency. I like it, Miss McCoy. What was it about? Janice got into a fight with her boyfriend, too. He says I'm putting too much importance on it, and I'm acting too excited. I'm driving home to you. Could you have a plate? What about your contest? You told me it was the most important thing in the world to you. Well, I never was a very good loser. No, it's that defeatist attitude that keeps you from being a winner. Janice, you know... She then goes out to meet I'm Vaughn. To do a lot for you. He's like the guy who's heading up the uh, contest she's going to enter. Things escalate quickly there, too. Look, last night was a mistake. I had a fight with the guy I'm staying with, and I was going to leave town. So I went to the party on a limb, and I'm in a Vaughn singing contest, and, I, and if I don't show up, I'm going to be letting a lot of people down. Doesn't stop her from having a final romp with the guy, though. Well, apparently, John and Peter, that's Kevin Costner, on the right is John. They're going to try to eliminate one of the contest members so Janice can have a better chance of winning. I want you to throw your car keys out the window. <laughs> You're the kid that's leaving again. Tell the jerks to get out of our way. I'm sorry to say that uh, number nine has apparently been held up. So uh, we will continue with number 10, Janice Johnson. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Janice chooses a very cleavagey dress and sings her song. three ladies just hopping in the hot tub. All right, let's talk about this movie called Sizzle Beach, USA. I actually have this on a pre-recorded VHS tape under the title Malibu Hot Summer. Now, this is a movie that stars Kevin Cop. Actually, it doesn't star Kevin Costner. He's in it. He's probably like the uh probably maybe the fifth or sixth or seventh person down in the, in the actor list in this movie but uh he was actually profiled on the box there you see after he got a little bit of fame in the mid 80s um he actually apparently tried to buy the rights to this movie from the director or producer so it would never be shown however he was a little too late uh, by that time they'd already sold it to troma who decided to release it in fact the video store that i worked at at that time picked up Sizzle Beach USA. That's how they retitled it in the Troma DVD, or I should say the DVD also from Troma has that same title. But the VHS, I had Malibu Hot Summer. But anyway, so, um, which was the original title, I believe. So anyway, uh, we have these three ladies. Actually, it's two ladies and uh, another one they, they find along the way. Are on their way to California, this girl named Dit, that's uh, her name, D-I-T, Dit, uh, she uh, inherited a house with her cousin on the beach in Malibu. So she picks up these two ladies and they say, why don't you come stay with me for a while? So uh, one of the ladies is a uh, inspiring uh, uh, singer named Janice. Uh, Dit herself is, wants to be an actress. And the other lady wants to be a gym teacher, Cheryl. So anyway, they all come and spend time at the beach. They all meet uh, various men. Um, uh, uh, Janice hooks up with uh, cousin Steve, the uh, Dit's cousin who also owns the house. Um, uh, Janice, uh, sorry, Dit then meets uh, John Logan, played by Kevin Costner. He's a cowboy. He has a ranch. Turns out he owns the ranch. He owns uh, several ranches around various states nearby, so he's probably a wealthy dude. 
And then um, Cheryl gets a job as a gym teacher um, with the promise that she won't get pregnant and uh, hooks up with this guy named Brent who eventually does uh, try to, uh, uh, pr uh, he uh, proposes to her, but she turns him, she turns him down. Um, but yeah, they all have their relationships. Um, Janice is going to enter this singing contest. Uh, run by this guy named Vaughn. Now, I may have lost something. I paid pretty close attention to this movie, but I may have missed something there. I, I think Vaughn was trying to have some other lady win. Um, so uh, somehow Kevin Costner and his little midget buddy, can you even say midget anymore? I don't know. But his midget buddy, Peter, uh, devised a plan to eliminate that girl from the competition. They basically hold her up, uh, make her take her clothes off, and uh, uh, leave her there for the police to come get her and this other guy she's hanging with. So she doesn't show up for the contest. Janice does. And Janice ultimately wins the contest, and which gives her the ability to uh, have like several hours of free studio time as well as $10,000. Our movie then ends with our three ladies in their bikinis hopping in a hot tub. And that's it. There you go. So again, Kevin Costner's screen time in this movie, probably less than 10 minutes, probably maybe less than five, nah, probably five to 10 minutes in that range. So he's not in there much, like I said. And he's, that scene there is not even in the movie, him in that white shirt and the jeans there. That's No, he's not in that. Now, I believe this movie was filmed in the late 70s. Uh, this may have been the first or second film that he actually filmed, but neither one of those films were released until he got famous, actually, years later. So there you go. Now, the movie itself, you know, I didn't really think it was that bad. Um, there was a lot of nudity in this movie, a lot of nudity, a lot of full frontal nudity, a lot of very casual nudity, like just women just walking around naked for no reason, which... Fucking fantastic, if you ask me, right? Where the hell is this in my life? When This never happens to me, but casual nudity here. In fact, there was one scene, I think IMDb even mentions this. This woman, totally nude, gets out of bed to answer the phone, and as she's reaching for the phone, the scene cuts away to a different angle, and she has bikini bottoms on them, but still topless. So somehow her bikini bottoms magically appeared during the course of the phone ringing. I don't know. That's called a goof. So anyway, um, but yeah, the movie, I thought it actually wasn't bad. Um, uh, there's nobody really of any renown in this movie other than Kevin Costner. And Kevin Costner actually did a pretty good job. You could tell he, he was a decent actor. Um, but the movie itself, uh, okay, it was, it was, it was fine. Uh, it, you know, it's basically, I want to say it was like a, one of these 80s teen sex comedies, although this came out in the 70s or was filmed in the 70s. But um, it really was well done, I thought, for what it was. So there you go. And there's plenty of nudity to keep interested throughout. So, yeah. So anyway, Sizzle Beach USA, that's it. You can get this DVD from Troma. I believe it's only available on this DVD. Um, I've discovered that some of Troma's DVD titles from the early 90s, or I'm sorry, late 90s, early 2000s, have some disc rot or something on them. They, they just stopped playing. Surf Nazis Must Die. I had a couple of problems with that. Toxic Avenger 2. Um, both of those have been released on Blu-ray, so uh, I was able to replace those. This one, thankfully, no problems whatsoever, at least not that I encountered, and that's good because it's not available on Blu-ray. Um, in fact, this thing is a little pricey. I think the cheapest you'll ever find it for is maybe 40 bucks, uh, but you'll see it on eBay, 50, 60, even higher or so, but yeah, I'm glad I got it. So I was finally able to upgrade this for my VHS tape. So anyway, check it out. Sizzle Beach USA, really not a bad film, Kevin, so, you know, don't be, don't be, uh, don't be embarrassed by it. It's not bad. You did a good job. Check it out, leave some comments. Sizzle Beach USA, watch it. Bye.